Good morning, Guernsey. You have such a beautiful island. I've never been here before. So happy to be here. I want to ask you a question. What if I told you there was something that you can do right now that would have immediate positive benefits on your brain, for your mood, for your focus? And what if I told you that that same thing would have long-lasting positive improvements on your brain and would also protect your brain from conditions like dementia, Alzheimer's disease, depression, as well as heart disease, um, um, uh, um, um, cardiovascular uh, uh, problems, um, and diabetes. Would you consider doing it? Yeah. Uh, yes, okay. I'm talking about the transformative power of physical activity. Simply moving your body will have immediate, long-lasting, and protective effects on your brain. What I'm going to tell you about today is really a story about how I used my deep understanding of neuroscience as a professor of neuroscience to essentially do an experiment on myself where I discovered the science about why exercise is the most transformative thing that you can do for your brain right now. So I've been a professor of neuroscience for many, many years, but what blows me away is the fact that our brains, we are in a room full of brains. I'm not talking about uh, um, an abstract brain. I'm talking about your brain and your brain. It is the most complex structure known to humankind. All of us, all of us have one in our heads. It defines how we see, feel, touch, smell the world. It defines our senses of humor. It defines what we remember from our lives. And that last bit, how we remember, what we remember, has always fascinated me as a student of the brain. I wanted to understand when I, I first started out in science how it could be that a simple event, let's say your first kiss, can form a memory that has changed something in your brain that could last a lifetime. How could that happen? So in my lab, I wanted to try and understand the pattern of neural activity. Uh, neurons communicate with each other with brief bursts of electrical activity called action potentials. How is it that that communication, that neural music of action potentials could actually help us form a new lifelong memory? And so to do this, I would listen to the activity of individual brain cells in a key structure that we know is critical for long-term memory. That structure is called the hippocampus. So I'd be sitting in a dark room listening to an individual hippocampal cell as the subject is learning something new. Months and months and months, hours and hours I would listen. Nothing, heard nothing. If you haven't listened to, I don't know if, how many people have listened to a brain cell before, but, but uh, they sound kind of like, uh, for those of you who are familiar with original radios, kind of like radio hash. It sounds like so I was sitting there it, one, one day listening to a brain cell. It was going like this. And then, right as the subject started to learn something new, I heard a subtle change. That brain cell started going. And I, I wasn't sure what, I heard it something. But when I went to go analyze that data later, I realized that I had just listened to the birth of a new memory. That cell had just been incorporated into a new memory circuit, and nobody else had seen that or heard that before in that way. So this work was so exciting, so fascinating, so engaging. I wrote papers about it. I got tenure because of that finding. I became famous in my field for studying the neurophysiology of memory, and I could have easily continued that for the rest of my career. But about two years ago, I did something very unusual for a scientist. I decided to completely change my research direction. And I did that because I encountered something that was so amazing with the potential to change so many lives, including my own. I experienced and discovered the brain-changing power of exercise. Now, I didn't make this discovery by reading a paper that inspired me or hearing a talk. 
uh, this was much more commonplace. I got fat, and, and I mean chubby. And this wasn't like a cute chubby or a sexy chubby. It was, it was just chubby. Uh, 25 pounds of chubby I had. Because I was sitting there in the dark room listening to the brain form new memories for such a long time. I didn't go outside. I didn't move. I ate a lot of takeout. I live in New York. There's great takeout. And I gained 25 pounds. So I did something that most of you would do. I went to the gym. And I learned that I love exercise classes. I did everything. I did spin, I did step, I did Zumba, I did boot camp. Um, I did, there's these great classes in New York, you know, very innovative classes. I did a class called Intensati, where we pair physical movements with positive spoken affirmations. And after every single one of these classes, I felt amazing. These classes helped me lose that 25 pounds, but what I noticed was that that good feeling, that energy, that positive mood that I got after every single class, that's what kept me going back. That's what allowed me to succeed. Well, fast forward about a year and a half into my new exercise regime, I'm sitting at my desk doing something that I often do, which is write a grant. And, um, I noticed something that really made me sit up and take notice, and that was grant writing was going really well. And it was surprising because grant writing never goes well. I'm pulling my hair out, I'm struggling, but it was going very smoothly. And I, I realized, I became conscious of the fact that it had been getting better over time because I was able to focus my attention deeper and longer, which allowed me to write better and longer, and my long-term memory, that thing I was studying in my own lab, seemed to be better as well. And in that moment, I made the connection. Maybe exercise was actually changing my brain. So I'm a card-carrying, curious neuroscientist. So what I did is I went immediately to the science literature to see what I could find about the effects of exercise on the brain. And what I found was an exciting literature, really growing literature that confirmed everything that I saw in myself, better mood, better long-term memory, better attention. And then I got really excited. I knew that, well, I knew I wanted to learn more about this area of research that I wasn't uh, um, studying in my own lab. And I know the best way to do that is to actually develop a new undergraduate course on the topic, because that would force me to learn the topic to teach to my undergraduates. And then I got really fancy. I decided I wanted to bring exercise into the classroom so students could actually experience exercise. So I went to the gym and I got certified as an exercise instructor to be able to teach this class. Um, the more I learned, the more I got fascinated with the effects of exercise. And, and this is what really made me change my research direction. And, um, what I found in my own lab, together with this literature on the effects of exercise, has led to the major idea of this talk, that is exercise is the most transformative thing that you can do for your brain. And I'm going to tell you why. There are three reasons. Reason number one, it has significant immediate effects on your brain. I noticed those mood effects. Those have been shown in studies. You not only get an immediate mood boost, you get an immediate improvement in your ability to focus your attention and improvement in your reaction times. That is, you're able to catch that cup of tea before it actually falls on the ground better right after exercise. Those are immediate effects. They do not last a long time. They last on the, minute, uh, on the order of minutes to hours. Second major uh, um, positive benefit of exercise, if you continue your exercise as I did, you start to see long-lasting brain benefits. Why? Because exercise changes the anatomy, the physiology, and the function of the brain. Let me start with my favorite brain structure, the hippocampus. Did you know that all of us in this room have brand new brain cells being born in our hippocampi all the time? And there's one thing that we know that can enhance that birth of new hippocampal cells, and that thing is exercise. You get more hippocampal brain cells, that makes your hippocampus bigger, and it improves your long-term memory. Exactly what I was seeing. What about attention? 
In fact, from um, neuroscience studies looking at the effects of exercise on um, people, the most common finding is an improved ability to shift and focus your attention. Exactly what I was seeing. And it also causes increases in volume of the brain area critical for attention, which is the prefrontal cortex right behind your forehead. And finally, what about mood? Long-term exercise increases levels of key neurotransmitters that are critical for good mood. Neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and noradrenaline are going up, so much so that exercise has been shown to be as effective as a most commonly used antidepressant to treat major depressive disorder. And the third reason why exercise is so transformative is it has protective ef uh, effects for your brain. In this sense, you can think of your brain as a muscle. All of the exercise that you're doing with your body is actually strengthening these two key areas of the brain, the hippocampus, building new brain cells, and the prefrontal cortex, strengthening uh, and increasing the volume of the prefrontal cortex. Why is this important? These are the two areas that are most susceptible to aging. So that the bigger and the stronger your hippocampus and your prefrontal cortex is, the better you're going to be able to stave off those diseases that come at our nervous systems with aging, dementia and Alzheimer's, just to name a few. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't going to cure Alzheimer's or dementia. But what it's going to do, it's going to strengthen your brain so it's going to take longer for these diseases to have a behavioral effect. And even six months of better cognition is going to save millions and millions of dollars if we all did this today. OK, um, so now we come to the talk, the part of the talk that everybody is asking the same question. Wendy, this is all fine. Neuroscience, neuroscience, neuroscience. All I want to know is how much exercise I have to do to get all those positive effects. Actually, people usually say, just tell me the least amount of exercise I need to do to get those positive effects. So here's my answer. Number one, the good news is you do not have to become a triathlete to get these effects. But what we do know is that you need to increase your, your heart rate. It has to be an aerobic workout. We know the most about the positive effects of aerobic workouts. What we recommend at this point is um, three to four times a week, good aerobic workout. But note, you do not have to go and, and, and um, uh, buy a membership in a fancy gym. What we recommend is that you add a, a, more aerobics to the things that you're doing already. Walking, power walking, walking with your dog, walking to the grocery store, doing some power vacuuming, kind of like Mrs. Doubtfire, that is a great way to get exercise. And if you have no exercise in your life right now, even better, because that takes less of an effort to get your heart rate up. So in that case, just a single power walk is good to get started. OK, so I went from memory pioneer to exercise explorer, from somebody that is uh, exploring the inner workings of individual hippocampal cells to somebody who wants to understand how exercise can change our brains. And the two major goals of my lab at this point are, number one, I really want to get at not just the exercise prescription, but an individualized prescription for you at your age, gender, fitness level, genetic background. What is the optimal exercise prescription for you? And number two, what are the neurochemical pathways that go from moving your muscles in the periphery to changing your brain? OK, so it's one thing to think about and, and uh, um, talk about exercise. And I hope I've inspired you a little bit to think in a different way about every time you move your body. But it's another thing to actually experience it. So I'm going to ask you all to stand up. And I'm going to ask you first to turn to your neighbor and say, you have a beautiful brain. OK, so we're going to do two minutes of intensati, but I need some music. 
So I'm going to ask Stuart to come up stage with his African drum to accompany us. Big hand for Stuart. Okay. Intensati, just do what I do, say what I say. It's call and response. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. It's right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. I am strong now. Let's hear you. with every exercise event that you bring into your life. This is not only something that is improving your brain immediately for long term and protecting your brain. It is improving your body. And if you do it right, it'll bring more joy into your life. Thank you very much.